This is QTV News with me, Momudu Kajaga. Thanks for joining us. Coming up, President Barrow has returned from the African Union's Extraordinary Summit in Niger. TRC resumes public proceedings. Two witnesses testify. Journalists suffered most on the journey, witness alleged. Gambians in rural areas have raised complaints about their living standards. Some say that due to poor service provision, what assumes to be as basic are luxury for them. A group of young Gambians has triumphed in a prestigious continental robotic competition. The champions age out stiff competition from 10 other African countries to emerge victorious. This and many other stories to come on tonight's newscast. Stay tuned. President Barrow has returned from the African Union's Extraordinary Summit in Niger, where the African continent's free trade area was launched. The treaty establishing the African continental free trade area aims, amongst other things, to create a single continental market for goods and services, with free movement of business persons and investments, therefore paving the way for accelerating the establishment of a continental customs union. When fully ratified, the deal will open the largest free trade zone in the world, with a combined GDP of around $3 trillion and more than 1.2 billion consumers. In an interview with QTV's Alusisha shortly after arrival, President Barrow described the new trade deal to be headquartered in Ghana, Accra, a big achievement and a big dream come true for the continent. It was a AU meeting that we were there to attend, but it was all centered on the free trade area. I think it was a landmark event. We were able to launch the free trade area. And this is about trade for the whole continent. We are talking about 1.2 billion population with a GDP of $3 trillion. This is huge and I think it's very, very important. 27 countries have ratified. 27 have ratified and 28 have signed. There's just one country that have not ratified and signed and that is Eritrea. But they are also in the process of signing. So it's a big achievement for Africa. I think it's a dream come true. We are looking forward to the implementation. I think everybody is excited. Uh, during the meeting we have side events also. Meeting very important personalities like the president of ECOWAS the Vice President of the Islamic Development Bank, the President of the African Development Bank. This is all about interest for the Gambia, economic interest for that, for, for that matter. So it was a very successful meeting. We also seized this opportunity to congratulate Hassan Jal. He was uh, nominated to be part of panel members of uh, imminent, imminent personalities. And this uh, panel that sits to discuss about people who will be appointed in leadership as far as uh, the AU is concerned. So it's a big recognition for, for, for the Gambia. Uh, but thanks to the African ambassadors in the AU. And our Gambian ambassador was in the center of things. I think we will thank him also for the efforts with our foreign minister. Overall, I think it was, it was a very good meeting. Your Excellency, uh, aside from uh, signing this trade deal, we understand the free movement of peoples and goods is still a challenge for the, for the continent. What do you think will be done in order to make sure that this trade deal is actually uh, realized as you all envisage? It's a big challenge, that's why we wanted to sign. And if you sign, definitely you will have guidelines, you have protocols, how you will implement this. I think now what we have to do, we should be committed. Committed to make it so that the implementation is, is smooth. But we are really excited and we are looking forward to it. What does the Gambia stand to benefit from this deal? It's a big market. 1.2 billion population, 3 trillion of GDP. It's a, it's a big market, so everybody will benefit, especially small Gambia. Okay. Your Excellency, so just uh, finally, uh, before you leave us, uh, just a few days ago, the opposition APRC claimed during a press conference that they have started engaging your government to have the former president back into the country. Are you really aware of this? I don't want to discuss about uh, politics. We are, we are, we are focused. And we have our transition. I think we are on track. TRRC is on. The commissions are on. Constitutional Review Commission is on. The electoral reforms are on. We are on track. We don't want to be distracted. I don't want to discuss about politics. This is my focus. This is the job the Gambian people have assigned me to do.
Two witnesses testified on Monday after TRRC resumes its public hearings following a two weeks break. Lamin Cham, editor of the Standard newspaper, testified on his alleged arrest, detention, and torture in 2006. Later, Sekou Jame, Secretary General of the Gambia Press Union, testified on the work of the GPU, the friendly media laws instituted by the former government, and the rights violations against journalists. QTV's Antomana Esu Nyasi reports. Following a two weeks recess, the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission on Monday resumed its public proceedings. The fifth session expected to run from the 8th to the 25th of July 2019, also ushered in the first institutional hearing, which focuses mainly on the media and the rights violations and victimization of journalists during the former President Jamez 22 years reign. Two witnesses appeared before the Commission on Monday. First up was Lamin Cham, current editor of the Standard newspaper. His testimony was in relation to his arrest and subsequent victimization in May 2006. He was among a group of journalists and former government officials who were arrested, detained and brutally tortured for allegedly sending information critical of the Jami administration to Mr. Pandering by editor of the U.S. online-based Freedom newspaper. Tumbul Tamba, Tumbul Tamba I recognize from me, he, is from the, he was from the State Guards and Musa Jami who was called Maliamugu. When you saw them, can you tell us what happened? Well, even before I actually asked anything or found out anything, blows, whips, red started falling on me. I could not understand, but I saw eight other people who were obviously drunk. From meters, you could, breathe, you, can, you, can, you, could, you could smell alcohol from their breath. I've never met them. I've never known them. And they didn't, they didn't look like they know me because, uh, uh, I mean, they were total strangers to me. But Tumbul Tamba and Musa Jame, I knew them before. They were the ones leading the torture. Furthermore, he told the commission that during his detention, he was also accused of tarnishing the image of former President Jame. In fact, he alleged he was asked by the late Tumbul Tamba why he mentioned Jame's name when reporting for the BBC. He also gave a historical background of the Daily Observer newspaper, which he had served between September 1992 and October 2005. Next up was Sekou Jame, Secretary General of the Gambia Press Union. His testimony was in relation to the work of the Gambia Press Union, violations of rights and victimization of journalists, and the repressive media laws instituted by the Jame administration to suppress the media and voices of dissent. In his testimony, he told the Commission that the environment under which the media operated under Jame was so hostile that the Gambia was at some point ranked the third worst country for journalists. So um, Jame kind of like set the tone because I mean, Cham said it here from 1995, he started labeling the journalists as illegitimate sons of Africa. But beyond that, he, uh, he, he actually made a lot of statements that didn't make journalists and journalism look good in the country. He many times, you know, sometimes referred to journalists as dead and rotten horses. Um, he at some point called on people not to buy newspapers because the journalists are not patriotic and they should allow us to starve to death. So that kind of like set the tone for, you know, what was to come um, for, for journalists. Testifying further on the challenges the media faced during Jamis' rule, the witness alleged that the APRC government was very violent towards journalists. He cited the killings of Omar Barrow in April 2000, the Haidara, former president of the Gambia Press Union, in December 2004, the enforced disappearance of former Daily of Zawad journalist Chief Ibrahim Amane, arbitrary arrest, detention and torture of journalists as a clear indication of the former region's brutality towards the media. He is expected to reappear on Tuesday to continue his testimony. Ansumane Sonyasi for QTV News. Access to basic services such as clean water, electricity and sometimes even food can become luxury for Gambians living in the rural areas. People in Paniko Ismail, Tumana, URR complained about some of their challenges during a press panel organized by the NGO Tostan. Ibrahim Balde reports. Often neglected by authorities, people in the rural communities see NGOs like Tostan as their savior when it comes to provision of basic needs such as education. According to their testimonies, traditional practices such as child or forced child marriage, which used to be rampant, are fast fading away due to awareness programs organized by Tustin in the last two years. This illustrates the importance of education. Educated people are the ones who occupy our National Assembly. 
they will become presidents. We shall send our children to school, and there should be no preference. Both male and female children should be sent. The female students should be allowed to complete at least their high school education. It is government's responsibility to provide the schools for communities like ours. These pictures I'm demonstrating to you shows the village in need of a milling machine, clean drinking water, ambulance, school and health care. We need this help from the authorities to provide us with these needs. Despite the apparent progress, the village still lacks basic essential services such as clean drinking water. A community of more than 300 people depend on one tap to get water. Since the rains began two weeks ago, they are battling with bad road network, as if this aren't enough, according to the village head, Demba Seidi. The only clinic in the village doesn't have a doctor or drugs. Our problems are many. They include lack of proper health facilities, access roads and water. We only have one tap in the village. We depend on farming for our sustenance. But our soil is dead, and we don't have fertilizer to boost our yield. So after every harvest, our produce is finished within six months. We are really struggling. Ibrahim Obalde, QTV News. The Gambia has for the first time won the Pan-African Robotics Competition, which featured 11 countries. The robotics competition is a challenge based on a real-world topic relevant to science and the sustainable development of Africa. As such, this year's theme was Solvable Challenges, the making of Africa's smart cities. Families, friends and others gathered at the Banjul International Airport to welcome the champions. Jennifer Sonko was there and this is her report. <laughs> Six high school students from six different schools who came together after a national competition represented the Gambia at the Pan-African Robotics Competition. The competition is an all-African robotics competition which brings together middle, high school and university robotic teams to provide solutions to less fortunate communities to give them the privilege of an improved standard of living. Africa has few innovations that can push the continent forward in sectors such as robotics technology. Our young champions were part of the Stars League, where star teams were challenged to build a robot, assemble the city pipeline, then transfer water to the drain to be sent to a pumping station. The driver of the robot, Yusuf Asengor, spoke to us about the challenge. Um, it was so hard because of the fact that we went there, uh, hoping to um, design our robot in, a, in such a way that um, uh, it was very good. But some other teams were having some difficulties. Of uh, Some other difficulties they were facing was um, the court itself was different from the robot they built. So the function of their robot could not work perfectly on the court. So they had to um, disassemble everything and assemble a new robot that could um, work with the court. Did that happened to Team Gambia or to other countries? Um, it happened to us, but um, unfortunately, hopefully, um, it happened to us, but we managed to pull it up and fix our robot in such a way that it, um, we had um, a very good start ahead of uh, other teams there. So what do you think made you guys win? What gave an edge above other teams? Was it the confidence? Was it the skill? What was it? Um, I'm, I'm going to say teamwork because we work together. Because the game itself is not, going, it's not played by one person. It's played by um, all of us. So I had to drive. The others have to put, if I bring the ball out, they have to throw the ball inside. So it's like teamwork. Women lag far behind men as a share of the workforce in most science, technology, engineering and math professions. Two girls out of six participants had the chance to participate in the competition. Aisa Demba spoke to us about her motivation. At first, I saw my phone and I thought, um, I want to make this phone. I don't just want to use it. I want to know the person who made it and like be like that person because I know that that person has made billions because everyone uses phones, right? Yeah, so then that's when I started to get interested into robotics and all. And then I started to get in, um, interested into computers, hacking, this encoding, sorry, programming and all. Anik Fal is the mentor of the team and according to her, they had proper strategies in place that were necessary to win the competition. 
Yusufo urged young Gambians to participate in robotics activities as participating and winning the Pan-African Robotics Competition is life-changing. He also spoke to us about future plans. Robotics, everything is possible. Dep depends on the mentality and the, you know, the awareness and all that. But I believe well, when it comes to that, my, me, myself, I want to be an engineer. So I think that is going to be possible, inshallah. The competition was solely funded and supported by private sector companies and individuals. Reporting for QTV News, I am Jenna Basonko. We'll go with a short commercial break. When we come back, the news continues. <laughs> QSL proudly brings you yet another new number series, the 52 and 53 number series. We now have a massive subscriber base of 1.2 million that is still expanding. So QCell is also expanding its number series to accommodate more people as they join our amazing network. The new 52 and 53 number series have the same fantastic services and the same great charges as the 3, 50 and 51 number series. No different. Call, text, browse the net and roam all over the world with the 52 and 53 number series. There are no limits as you communicate with the Gambia's trusted network. QCell Senior Bus, the Gambia's quality network. Uh, life is sweet like chocolate. I'm steady counting blessings every day. Uh, it's show time. It's fashion time. It's happening live at Q City the 13th of July. It's Tubaski style. Don't miss any moment of our Tubaski catwalk. Make your Tubaski outfit choices with classic designers featuring Adiso, Samuras, Esdam, Aka Creation, Ada Creation, NS Design, Gora Bitek, Wali Sop, Schoolboy Sop, Ruru Doll, ML Creation, SD International, Oldest Creation, CK Creation. Among other classic designers, tickets, VIP, 500 dollars and regular, 200 dollars only. Come join the exciting fashion journey with QTV's Tobaski Style on the 13th of July at Q City. For more information and tickets inquiry, please call 324444 or send us an email at marketing at qtv.gm. Welcome back and thank you very much if you're just joining us. The Gambian Nurses and Midwives Association concluded its annual general meeting which also saw the voting in of a new body tasked with steering the affairs of nurses and midwives in the country for the next five years. Babu Karsi was there, and this is his report. The occasion gave the nation's healthcare providers the opportunity to discuss and review their achievements and challenges and chart the way forward for the advancement of the association. The AGM brought together nurses and midwives across the country to discuss, network and vote into office a new executive to look into the affairs of members for the next five years. Mam Kumbandao Sise, Vice President of the Association, thanked the members of the nursing and midwives family for the support they received during their time in office and hoped that they would continue from where they stopped. We wish to thank you all for this amazing journey, for the opportunities to meet and walk and speak and share with so many of you as we coll collectively upheld and advance Nagam and for the fond memories that we will always cherish. We will forever be yours and Nagam's friend and fan at large. I wish every success to you, the new participants. It will be challenging, it will be interesting, and it will be exciting. It is not easy to make changes, and change doesn't come easily. However, nurses are very innovative and creative and can solve any problem. So we have great confidence in your ability to succeed and we will be following your progress with great interest. Musa Sane, Deputy Director of Nursing at the Ministry of Health, advised the nurses to be steadfast and act as ambassadors in exercising their duties, but also call on the government to look into the welfare of nurses. As the country is in transition, we must join hands to put right structures in their right places and improve on the existing ones. To achieve this, we have to use the three M's of management at our disposal judiciously. And these are 
the manpower, money, and material resources. As the frontliners in healthcare, it is apparent that everyone is aware of problems we are suffering in the name of Mr. Sacrifice. Continuous sacrifice, for every sacrifice goes with a godly reward. I pray that Allah, the Almighty Allah, give us eternal and uh, eternal reward in addition to our little takeover home. Although the North does the greater part of the healthcare work, we are still struggling with our hospital bills. This is a serious area that needs to be looked at. Because if, the, for example, the Army General is sick today, he may be exempted from paying hospital bill. But if the nurse is sick, he still has to pay for x-rays and for the laboratory fee. One of the problems faced by nurses and midwives is the movement of qualified personnel away from public health service, either to work in the private sector or go abroad looking for better pay and improve working conditions. As a consequence, this leaves persons of public health centers and other health facilities in their need of these skills. The outgoing Secretary General, GBC, highlighted this among key areas that government should look into. Nurses being asked to pay when they come to hospital, this is something that probably government can, 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 can chip in and then maybe prevent that. And of course in terms of training, you know, helping, because for example, if now the nursing training in the School of Nursing is kind of uh, being, uh, people are paying for that training, so government need to come and chip in so that they give nurses free scholarship. For, for their training and of course also the continuous professional development of nurses is something that government need to look at. They also need to look at regulation because regulation is something that is very very important to do and then they can also look at enumeration of nurses because enumeration is something that nurses are always talking about and they, are, they have a lot of concern considering that nurses are people who are exposed to a lot of risks so there could be a lot of things that government could, could, can do to help uh, the, the problem current, the current status quo of nurses in the country. The new seven-member executive includes Yusuf Asanyang as president, Fatumata Kasama as vice president. Babu Karsi, QTV News. Apple Tree International High School held its 11th graduation ceremony. The graduation saw more than 50 students collect their senior secondary school certificates. Babu Karsi again. The graduation ceremony was attended by school children, teachers, parents, as well as senior officials from the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education. Guest speaker Mr. Dauda Nyang, Director General of the Gambia Tourism and Hospitality Institute, advised the students to be well prepared for the future, saying they have to decide what they want to be in life. Your purpose in life. What is it that you want to do in life? I mean, who is it that you are admiring right now? in the Gambia or beyond, because this is going to help you establish um, the program of study. It will also help you, um, guide you in your career path. So it's very important that before you start thinking of what you want to study at uni or at college, you know, please think of what is it that you want to do in life? Addressing the gathering on behalf of the school, Clement Ebunoha called on the ex-students of Apple Tree to come together and help in the advancement of the school. This is your alma mater. And I call on you to form an alumni association of this great institution. Who knows? You could pull your resources together and build a world-class university to be called Apple Tree International University of Science and Technology. Long live the Republic of the Gambia. Long live Apple Tree International School. Umi Awaba, who was named the most outstanding student among the graduates, spoke to QTV on the sidelines of the graduation. I feel very great and excited and special as well, plus being unique to be the most outstanding student throughout the graduation ceremony of Apple Tree International High School. Um, if I finish the school at this time right now, and I have great results, of course, which I'm expecting, I would like to study law to defend my country and the innocent people of this Gambia as well. The students were advised to be confident about their abilities and to be proud of who they are, and that they must have a principal desire to achieve excellence in their various fields of endeavors. People want to make millions from pressing the buttons of your computer. Hello, the world is not constructed that way. 
Babu Karsi, QTV News. In sports, Red Scorpions stunned Interior FC with a 2-1 victory to clinch their first ever Women's Football Federations Cup title. Gambia's all-time leading goal scorer Adam Atamba inspired her side to yet another victory on a lively Saturday evening at Independence Stadium in Bacau. The Josuan girls captured both the league and the FF Cup this season. Babu Karsi again. The Queens, as they are known, came with their tails up, bowed by their recent league triumph. Interior's Jabu Jabate came close to opening the scoring in the 8th minute soon after the match got underway on a partly cloudy afternoon when goalkeeper Rabi Koli was penalised for bringing down an opponent in the box, leaving the referee with no choice but to point to the spot. Koli redeemed herself by saving Jabu Jabate's spot kick, which led to an open game. A dangerous corner was met by the head of interior's Fatou Dabo at the near post, but the defender Penda Koli was alerted to the danger and rushed off her line to smooth the ball and clear. A few minutes later, Another clear opportunity for interior saw so Mbasi Dabo head wide at the back post and both sides got into the locker room at halftime goalless. Some minutes into the second half, the game started developing into an end-to-end -end encounter, which swung rapidly in favor of Red Scorpion as striker Adam Atamba fired her side in front in the 63rd minute with a powerful strike. Seven minutes later, a positive and direct run from interior striker Fatou Dabo saw her surge into the Red Scorpion box and unleash a rush pin shot to level the score. <laughs> on the 88th minute, Kumba Kuyate sealed victory for Red Scorpions after she latched on a low cross to slot home the winner. Red Scorpions coach Joron Benga said the season's success is down to proper planning and hard work on the training ground and took the opportunity to call on those responsible for national team selection to be fair in selecting players for national duties. Hard work and belief in myself. I said, how competitive is the women's football? <laughs> yeah, to me, honestly, there is still room to improve. Because looking at the first division, we have only six teams. And I can say that the first three are always uh, in top. So I think we really need to improve, like I said. And for the second division also, there is a lot of work to do on there. Yeah, to me, it's not a matter of increasing the teams. I think they should leave it to the six, uh, to the six teams and we give opportunities to the players who are there. And I want to take this opportunity to ask DFF or the organizing committee that, I mean, it's high time we know, I mean, the criteria they have put in place to select our national team because the Gambia belongs to us. I'm saying it again, the Gambia really belongs to us because I cannot see or I can't take it. I mean, people competing in the National League to be part and parcel of the national team and then after you see people who play one game or second game and at the end you see them in our starting 11. Honestly, it's really hurt me and I think today is the right opportunity for me to say what I really feel. Gambia belongs to all of us. This is the first time in the history of women's football that a team has played an entire season losing a single game while going on to win both the league and the FF Cup. <laughs> Babu Karsi, QTV News. Before we end this bulletin of the news, let's take a quick look at our main news stories. President Barrow has returned from the African Union's extraordinary summit in Niger. TRC resumes public proceedings. Two witnesses testify. Journalists suffered most on the jammy, witness alleged. Gambians in rural areas have raised complaints about their living standards. Some say that due to poor service provision, what assumes to be as basic are luxury for them. A group of young Gambians has triumphed in a prestigious continental robotic competition. The champions age out stiff competition from 10 other African countries to emerge victorious. That's all we have for you in this edition of the news. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now. Join us tomorrow.